uh, without further ado, I'm delighted to hand over to um, Dr. Jackie Rogers, who's Associate Dean for Learning, Teaching and Student Experience at the University of West of England. And, um, and her esteemed panel, which uh, Quinn Runkle from SOS UK, uh, Dr. Sarah Williams uh, from UWE and Professor Simon Kemp from the University of Southampton. So over to you, uh, Jackie and panel. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Liz. And it was really interesting listening to that last discussion because um, what we're moving on to now is three uh, very short presentations, which will start to explore in a little bit more depth about what's going on on the ground. And I think Joe asked a question about um, what do students want? Well, there's a really interesting um, presentation from Quinn, which is about what do students want and some, some insight into some student feedback. But also we have two examples of where colleagues are ahead of the game and are trying to implement within their curriculum, uh, EDI, sustainability, and uh, entrepreneurship and employability. So there's a reflection um, on what they are doing within their curriculum, within their classes. So I'm conscious we have very little time, so I'm gonna hand over straight away. And we're gonna start with um, Simon Kemp and an example of what he's been doing um, in his course to uh, integrate these three elements. Simon, if you'd like to share your screen when you're ready and then we can move on. Certainly. Brilliant, thank you. Thank you, Jackie, and thank you for the invitation to speak here. And um, Joe, yes, you can probably tell by my accent, that was me in the comment box. Um, so I'm just going to really rattle quickly through a couple of things that we're doing here at University of Southampton on a couple of my modules, which are about sustainability in the curriculum. Um, part of my role at the university is that I lead on education for sustainable development in terms of embedding it across all academic disciplines. But these case studies are part of the environmental science curriculum, so they're part of our environmental science degree. However, this first example here is something that I have run for many years with a number of excellent colleagues. Um, and this is a summit game on the sustainable development goals. And it's run as part of an environmental science module. I've run it as part of University of Southampton cross-curricular modules available to all students. I've run it as events here, conferences, school events, etc. And the idea here is that everybody represents a different block of nations and the world has suffered a massive financial crisis and the United Nations has decided that we can't try to achieve all 17 SDGs, we can only now focus on six. And then students have to go away. When it's part of the curriculum, they have a week to research their block of nations, and also what are the main pressures, sustainability resources for them, and to learn more about the SDGs from the context of that particular area of the world. Then they come back and we have a one hour session where they will put forward their main concerns, their main ideas, then the next day we'll have a two hour session where they negotiate with each other, but different blocks of nations have got different power. Now we found that that works incredibly well for getting people enthused with the SDGs, but also understanding the fact that they are inherently interlinked and that they're not separate. When we do this for students from other disciplines, it really opens their eyes about the nature of sustainability in terms of that interdisciplinary focus and the way that is not just purely about the environment and the social, cultural and economic dimensions from there. So we also run this live on Twitter at the same time. I give the different blocks of nations that are on Twitter accounts. They have the passwords for those. They negotiate. We've had people from other parts of the world even participate using the SDGs hashtag. And we then get it down to six SDGs. But what really brings it home to students are the ones that they've left out. What are the ones that they have decided collectively are not likely to be the priorities of the world? So it's really about digging down into it, but looking at it from different perspectives from different parts of the world. Um, and the final example, because uh, I was asked to just keep it just three minutes, obviously, is a module which I run at undergraduate and postgraduate level called the Sustainability Professional. Now, this very much speaks to the employability agenda, and also, regardless of the particular shot I've used there, it also speaks to the EDI agenda as well, because the way that I teach this module is that I do employability skills from the perspective of an entrepreneurial route and working for a consultancy or an NGO or a local authority at the start. Then I run 10 weeks of workshops where we bring our alumni back 
So all graduates from our environmental science degree course, sometimes ranging from one to 20 years, and they come from different mixes, they're of different gender and ethnicity backgrounds. We also make sure that we get um, all the different all the different perspectives of sustainability to be part of this. The whole point is, is meant to be closing the loop. We're now at a point now where we've got three year waiting list for students who want to graduate, sorry, who want to come back to participate in this to run workshops. So it gives students employability skills and they work on real case studies that these alumni have worked on in their organizations and they then have to present their findings to them. We've now got a situation where we've had a total of, I think it's six um, graduates over the last three years who have ended up getting jobs with the companies that have come in through directly making those links. And then we close the module off with some workshops on how to conduct yourself at an interview with a head of environment from a global consultancy company uh, and how to present yourself electronically through LinkedIn. And that is something that is now a model which has been expanded with the parts of the university too. So I shall stop there. I've probably gone over time because I tend to talk too much, sorry. Thank you very much, Simon. Two really ex interesting examples of where you're bringing together um, elements that, of, um, that, of the, the new benchmark statement together within the curriculum. Can I now um, uh, welcome Sarah Williams uh, from UE, if you'd like to, Sarah, if you're able to share your screen and you're taking this up a level a little bit to a sort of programmatic approach. Brilliant, thank you. I'm Sarah Williams. I'm the program leader for the environmental management undergraduate degree at UWE. Um, so I'm just going to give a bit of an overview into um, the different themes at, and just sort of mention um, the main source of integration throughout the program and then just a, a few of the other, other ways we do things. Um, so starting with sustainability, um, it's something we talk about right from the beginning of the, of the program. Um, we developed a program-wide series of guided um, focus group discussions, we called it the Me, the EM Student Project, and it was designed um, to get students to visualise uh, and take a, a ownership of their experience right from the beginning of the course. Um, the outcome of that is that the students generated um program values that they agreed is how they would operate and how they wanted the cohort to sort of develop around a, a certain set of values uh, and sustainability came out quite quite strongly in in those which I'll, I'll, I'll show you those right at the end of this um, short presentation we've also um, we embed field trips within the program um, I've got a lovely quote from one of the students who said it was nice to see some real life examples of what we're learning about and to hear other people talk about it helping us to gain better knowledge about how to live the things we're learning about which I thought was quite quite nice um, and that was on our recent trip to the Centre for Alternative Technology in, in Wales. Um, other sources um, that, that link to the sustainability theme are threaded throughout the module um, and <laughs> A wasp on my head um, and we make links uh, to for, between the students and the student unions uh, green team which allows students to sort of apply their learning and get involved with um, projects around campus so uh, recently they, they took part in a sustainable fashion um, project um, through that group um, so moving on to um, EDI, um, again, we address that through the programme values. So through that series of focus discussion, they talk about um, how to how to operate, um, what, what the sort of forum should, should be for um, inclusivity and allowing everybody's um, opinions to come out to, to promote that sort of discursive approach to our learning. Um, we also create quite a few links through research projects, so increasingly we have um, opportunities through internal UE funding um, to employ student interns, 
um, and we've recently completed a um, student intern project where they worked with us on a research project to deliver a community climate cafe within um, quite a socially deprived area of Bristol. So it gave students an opportunity to come out of the university and into the community and start to apply their learning that way. Um, in terms of employability, um, we thread that throughout some of the modules. So we've got a couple of modules that specifically relate to that. One is around professional development. It's co-designed with the UE careers team. It focuses um, students on thinking about future careers, um, thinking about their professional development, um, developing their CVs. And it's also linked to an assessment in which they take part in a professional interview. So it's, it's there to sort of start them thinking about their career trajectory. Um, and also we have a, a module called environmental management in organisations, which places students within organisations and, and gets them to uh, conduct environmental assessments on a part of, of their um, company. Um, we also encourage the students to take short term and long term placements um, and also as much work experience as they can they can get. So some of those are through the student, student intern projects, but also with um, with external uh, employers as well. So we've got quite a few out on placement at the moment and we're increasing the opportunities for the students to do those placements. Um, just over the summer, which seems to be quite attractive to them at the moment. Um, and then entrepreneurship, um, we've, we haven't done a lot of this. We've done a, a, maybe about three or four in the last two years, uh, where we've invited professionals to share their professional journeys with the EM students. Um, so we've had a couple of startups come in, one's Measurable Energy, um, and one's recy recycling technologies where we, we actually went to visit um, recycling technologies, but measurable energy came to visit us and they talked about their trajectories. Uh, they, they told us it was very inspiring for the students to hear um, about the sort of wiggly journey that people have gone on to get to where they are. And in both cases, it led to opportunities. We, we have a, um, one of our students still working with measurable energy at the moment. So um, I think that's a, a really good way to inspire their enthusiasm. Um, and also there's lots of opportunities for our entrepreneurship created through different research projects so some of them recently been working on um, air quality monitoring and, and I know that's led to lots of ideas around um, future careers um, okay so sorry that was very quick um, I'm, I'm just going to show one last slide which is the program values that the students created this year you can just have a look at oh there we go Thank you, Liz. And so if people are, are um, interested in staying on for just another five minutes or so uh, and have any questions regarding the, the last three presentations, then um, I'm sure the presenters will be, be able to stay on for a little bit longer. Uh, uh, so um, could, could I ask Quinn and well, actually Simon's had to go. So Quinn and um, Sarah, if you're, are you able to put your cameras on again? Um, just having a look at some of the, the, the comments that are coming through. Um, and I'm, I, I suppose, can, can I sort of ask one of the questions? I think it was really, is one of the things that we, we are talking about with students is about eco anxiety and conscious that with the students, the courses they're doing in the climate crisis and the biodiversity crisis, there is a lot of eco anxiety. Is there a role for um, entrepreneurship to enable students to see themselves as solution makers for some of that, uh, the, the problems we have and therefore to address that eco-anxiety. Yeah, it's a really good point, Jackie. Um, we're definitely seeing eco-anxiety as, as an increasing issue, something that lots and lots more students are talking about and identifying. Um, but right across the boards, not only on sustainability sorts of courses, but really, really broadly across the student population. The, the key thing um, that we always say in response to issues around eco-anxiety is that it's not a reason not to engage with the issues. It's a reason to engage deeply and meaningfully with the issues because students are engaging with this anyways. 
And in an educational environment, we can be framing those issues in a way that we can talk about the solutions, we can talk about the ways in which through our courses and through our professions, we can be tackling this. So um, uh, the, the key thing I think for, for students and as Georgie says in the chat there, for staff as well, mm. is to be feeling really empowered um, to think about how as individuals in their in their current capacities and in future capacities in their future professions that they can be tackling the the sorts of issues that we face um, and we know that students especially when they're involved in activities through their course um, or through their students union say um, that that empower them to take action and to take meaningful action that that really kind of quells some of those feelings but it's also right to feel a lot of that you know we we are facing enormous issues. And I think as educators, we can model that as well and say, you know what, these are really big things to be grappling with. And, and that's not something we also need to shy away from in the classroom. Thank you. I can see Pete um, has got a hand up to ask a question and then, then Sarah, Pete. Yeah, not a question, but a, a comment. Um, we do have a reputation in environmental science that's being uh, kind of preoccupied with doom and gloom. Um, it's important to remember, remember that we have made a lot of wins in the past. Uh, so in and amongst all of the, the kind of um, the predictions and, uh, uh, and dark futures that we see, if you build in things where, th where we have solved problems and made positive progress, it actually reinforces that, that view that we do have the capability to make positive change. And we all know lots of examples of this, so I'm not going to them, but I think that's really important to push forward. Thanks. Sarah. Sorry, I don't know why I can't put my video on, but I can't. So, um, but I was just going to say this is really topical because um, a st students, as a result of our field trip, were saying to me that they they felt um, that they they needed some they, they almost felt demotivated by what they were learning because they were feeling so overwhelmed by what they were learning that they wanted opportunities to learn about kind of positive futures and positive things that are, that are happening so we we're designing that into our new third year module for um for next year uh, along with cat actually we're doing it in collaboration with cat um sorry that's the center for alternative technologies and um and the other thing we're doing is one of the students um, we, it, through our student rep meetings also brought up this issue um, and we've applied to the university for a, a bit of funding to support a program, um, sort of a, a series of, of meetings that the students will design and own, uh, hopefully to sort of make it more student led. Um, but the idea is that they'll have monthly meetups where they can discuss the content of the program and start to sort of support each other with the things that they're learning about alongside myself and probably uh, some other colleagues as well. So I think that they are also um, quite innovative in trying to, to deal with the, the way that they're feeling or that, that you know, they're, they're, they want to help and, and and connect over those issues as well thank you i, I think um, what's been interesting today is looking at some of the examples we've had where we've seen um sustainability is, is clearly embedded in, in a lot of the courses we've seen edi being um, embedded in the the way that there was approached the field trip this morning and the edi work that you've obviously been doing sarah in terms of those shared values and going back to what diane said earlier about one of the challenges is how do we embed entrepreneurship into the curriculum I suppose, that, and, and Sarah, you mentioned that that was something that you were were working on and starting to develop. I suppose, the, how, how do we bring entrepreneurship in the, in the senses that we've been defining it into the curriculum? It doesn't necessarily fit naturally, but um, clearly it's something that the benchmark statement is asking us to do. Any, any thoughts from colleagues on that? Or any more thoughts from you, Sarah, on how you were doing that? Um, well, I think you know, I, only through what we've we've done already. Um, I'm fortunate enough to it's it's my brother who is the um, 
that he's it is his startup and he's an environmental scientist so um i've been able to link into his network and and with him um into areas that maybe they wouldn't have really known about otherwise that my students wouldn't have known about otherwise so uh, but the result of that has been quite inspiring in terms of their um them beginning to feel like there are other things that they could do um which are around sort of product design um uh, and maybe thinking a bit more outside the box that, that that they've been sort of led led into i guess um so yeah i think hearing inspiring stories is quite quite impactful for this age group hmm. quinn yeah um this is an example from a few years ago i don't know if there's anyone on the line from the university of bristol at all um but may maybe five or six maybe longer years ago um bristol did an interesting piece of work lining up exactly those two things so entrepreneurship and sustainability education and um, as they married up those two priorities, um, some really interesting things came out of that, showing actually that there's loads of synergy and loads of overlap when you think about the broad skills that students need to engage in those two spaces. So leadership, communication skills, creative thinking, creative problem solving, team working. So when you think about the actual skills embedded in being a good entrepreneur, and being a good sort of sustainability advocate, there's actually loads and loads of overlap there. So although certainly in my mind, sometimes those two things seem quite distinct from each other, when you actually think about the things that students would be doing to engage in those two areas, I think there's probably more synergy than we'd initially think. I think that that's a very interesting point and a very relevant point to take away. It's about those skills. Thank you, Jackie. And thank you, Quinn and Sarah. And I've just popped in the chat that uh, Sean commented earlier that when we considered entrepreneurism in the SBS, we, review, we viewed it through the lens of developing relevant professional skills, succeeding gra graduate employment. Sean, I don't know if you want to have the final word and say something about that before we bid farewell to everybody. Final word, that's a bit scary. Yes, and um, when we did realise that, um, that that entrepreneurism wasn't necessary to come to mind when we thought about ES3 subjects. So we did think of it in terms of um, those, those skills, those competencies, not the environmental content, but what students would need or what graduates would need to succeed in environmental um, uh, environmental jobs. Yes, we thought about that entrepreneurship and in terms of creativity, but also professional skills and professional development and, and, and confidence related skills as well. Brilliant. Well, thank you for the first word and the final word. That's wonderful. Thank you to everybody once again. We hope you found it useful and hope you found it valuable.